If you believe that God exists, you must have a brain virus. Have you ever been engaged in a conversation as a Christian with a skeptic about evidences for the Christian faith and have been criticized in that way? Uh, for me as a Christian, it feels a little bit unfair and I don't really like it much. Uh, Mark, as a philosopher, what's going on here? Well, if the first thing is nobody wants to be insulted like that. So that's not productive discourse to start with. But from a philosopher's viewpoint, we look at that and we see that as a very particular kind of fallacy. It actually has a name. It's called argumentum ad hominem. It means attack against the person or argument against the person. And the problem with that is not merely that it, it's a distraction from civil discourse, but that it doesn't strike at the point of the argument. In other words, if you're attacking a person rather than the argument that they're posing, you're really missing it. So there is a distinction between the character of an individual and the argument that they're posing. And the argu argumentum ad hominem is specifically missing the argument and going to the person. That's not legitimate. It's, it's, a, it's a fallacy of relevance. It's irrelevant what the person's character is to the argument that they're posing. And it also is a fallacy of appeal to emotion because it has an, an emotional appeal. It's, it's more rhetorical, so it isn't really an argument. Okay, so we've identified this as uh, the ad hominem fallacy. Ken, um, what should we do if we're engaged in a conversation and we're a victim of an ad hominem attack? And how can we uh, avoid doing the same thing ourselves? Well, as Mark uh, pointed out there very well, that uh, this is a problem of relevance. Anything you say about a person's character that is independent of the argument is totally irrelevant. So you want to stay away from character issues. It's okay to criticize. It's okay to attack the argument itself. Stay away from character analysis. Uh, you can do it in a couple different ways, Fuzz. For example, you can name call. You can just call people bad names. We call that a, the abusive, the ad hominem abusive. Or you can say that somebody has a vested interest, a circumstantial fallacy, or you can accuse the person of hypocrisy. So the ad hominem can come in a, a variety of ways. I think what we need, to, we need to do when somebody commits an ad hominem against us is just to stop and say, look, the character attack is irrelevant to what I'm arguing here. Let's, let's keep our focus on the argument. And I think, uh, you know, when it's done, when we do it, we, we need to pull that back and make sure that our premises, which are the supporting element of an argument, is really focused on the argument. So stay away from the character issues if they have nothing to do with the argument. Now, is it ever okay to criticize somebody, though, when we're engaged in a, a discussion like this? Very important question, because there are times where the character is the issue at hand. In a courtroom, if I'm on the jury, I need to know whether that person has been guilty of plagiarism or uh, uh, making false statements. Uh, and there the issue is, um, because I need to know is the character, I need to know their testimony. So there are times where you can look at the character, but only if, again, if it's relevant to the argument. 